So our next contest is between boxers from Egypt and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Congo. Mia Steve. Here is Omar El Ahwadi, 24 years of age. A terrifically precise power puncher. And this man, Steve Flenguk, Flenguka Mbia, is a really adept punch picker. Long shots, uppercuts at mid-range, as we see judges from Poland, the Philippines, Israel, South Korea and Bulgaria scoring this one. Referee for this it was a terrific display against Bruno Miguel Fernandez de Barros, overturning a deficit in what was a very close contest. As for Palenga Luka Mbia, very effective display against the compact, muscular Arena Pakela of Sierra Leone to book his place in this gold medal bout. And remember, we need to be declared a victor here to go through to Paris next year. Round one. So we're underway then. Two boxers with contrasting styles contesting for the Olympic qualification quota for Paris next year. The boxer wearing red is Omar El Ahwadi, 24 years of age from the Egyptian capital Cairo, the man who just fired in a right uppercut and a beautiful right hand off the back foot is Steve Kulengoluka Mbia. Comes to the ring as the reigning African continental champion at 71 kilograms from the event in Yaoundé, Cameroon earlier this year. Contested the world championships in Tashkent, Uzbekistan as well, losing in a preliminary round. But this one, the contrasting styles, both men possess a fair amount of pop in their punches. But Kulen Galuka Mbia likes to operate at long range. See El Hwadi, El Hwadi, but on the end of a right hand there, but his feet almost always flat and rooted to the canvas. And that getting that leverage on his punches is why he's just about every shot he throws is loaded with power. Yeah, he really does load up on everything he throws, Awadi. Awadi a little bit less tidy and textbook on that previous attempted combination than we're used to seeing from him. The left jab goes out and comes back at the same velocity usually. The right cross is like a rapier. On that previous attempted combination, a little bit ragged. Kulanguka Mbia. Kulanguka Mbia. He does have a wonderful left jab. He uses it to set up so much of his success. Leaping left hook is short to the mark from Lawadi. Keeps firing that same shot. See that nick beneath his left eye. In the face of Alawadi brought that into the ring after his semi-final efforts yesterday. That's a pile-driving right, landed with the inside of the glove. Referee on that incorrect punch immediately. And it was just threatening to stray around the rear of the head, which would render it a rabbit punch. So an illegal blow on two counts. Nice right hand to the body, and it doubled over. Kalungaluka Mbia. Raiding attacks being launched. Oh, look at that counter-right hand attempted by Kalungaluka Mbia. Both of these men getting terrific leverage into their shots. As though they're looking to end this one inside the distance. Beautiful counter left, right from Kulungaluka Mbia. Catches the advancing Elawadi, but he continues to press. Keeps the attack going. Not much accuracy behind his work, but my goodness, he is committed to his attacks. I feel like this could be over at any second. Both fighters are putting putting in heavy shots. What an opening round, my goodness. Neither man really taking the time with the niceties of the jab or a feeling out process. They were letting the big punches fly right from the opening belt. Kalunga Luka keeping cool under this man's fire and was really having success as he drew him in. Left hook success for Alawadi during that 
coming together. But that's how Kalungaluk was able to operate. Two quick nudging shots to catch the advancing boxer in red. But again, some torrid trade-offs between the two. Yeah, it really has been. And Bia really does well when he can... Oh, the scores. So a 4-1 split in favour of Omar Alawadi. But perhaps Kalungaluk and Bia deserved a little greater share of it than that. 4-1 down after three completed minutes. Round two. So into the second round, and look at that lead left hand from Kulungaluka Mbia, having conceded the first round on a 4-1 split. Those shots long from Alawadi. And now this is Kulungaluka Mbia right in his wheelhouse, over the, over the top right, not too far away from Alawadi. But when he pistons out that lead left hand, it is so long and stiff. I'm short with the Salva, but look how he kept it going to make it a two-phase attack, and he's keeping the man occupied before dropping down and scoring to the body, ending that combination with a terrific left hook beneath the right elbow of Elawadi. This is Kulungaluka Mbia at his finest. I was just about to say, this is what Mbia really needs to do. Keep to what he's got good at. Straight shots, straight jabs, straight combinations. Nice left uppercut from Omar Alawadi, but look at the response from Kulungaluka Mbia. Fired in about half a dozen shots, hooks and uppercuts without reply, and then a shot just after the command of stop landing from Kulungaluka Mbia, who's had a brilliant first minute of this second round. Inaccurate from the gloves of Elawadi, plenty of determination. Kalungaluka Mbia bobbing and weaving in the pocket to make his man miss. Couldn't make him pay, but then look at that uppercut and hook success. Double hook to head them body. I think Elawadi may have blown himself out there. Right uppercut from Kalungaluka Mbia. Nice left hand from Elawadi. Just threatening to open up, but look at that right hook, left uppercut from Kalungaluka Mbia. And Elawadi's puncher just becoming a little ragged now as he's peppered with uppercuts to the head and hooks to the body. Terrific combination punching. Nice left hand from Elawadi, but make no mistake, the governor for this previous passage of the round has been Kalungaluka Mbia. And now he's back on a long straight left jab. Flowing beautifully now is the reigning African continental champion. Alawadi thinking about his attacks but hasn't been able to demonstrate the accuracy that we so readily associate with him. Counter right hook with a high elbow like Gennady Golovkin from Kulungaluka Mbi as he spun off the line to avoid the counter. I think Alawadi's out of, out of steam. I think he's punched himself out. He's looking tired. Nice left jab to the body once again from Kulungaluka and Mbia. Jab upstairs attempted from El Awadi. Oh, that's a oh. beautiful half hook, half uppercut with the right hand from Kulungaluka and Mbia. And El Awadi has been touched up with some really precise, powerful punches from the reigning African continental champion. What a brilliant response from the man in blue. Kulungaluka Mbia conceded the first round on a 4-1 split and right from the jump in round number two, he established a piston-like left jab and then hit his Egyptian opponent with practically every punch in the book. I think that's a terrific response and that is his round in microcosm. Such variety in his work. Yeah, that was a beautiful round. Just the straight shots, the uppercuts. His man did, oh, beautiful left hook there. So let's take a look at the response. So Kulungaluka and Bia outscored 4-1. I find that staggering. And the distribution of the scores means that El Awadi Second. leading 20 points to 18 for judges 2, 3, 4 and 5. So that means it's going to be really difficult for this man to win on points. He's going to have to take his man out inside the distance. But the scores in that second round, I find surprising to say the least. There's an overhand right from Kalungaluka Mbia, who has started this round in the same determined and impressive fashion that he demonstrated throughout the entirety of round number two, only to lose it on a 4-1 split. 
Villa is really going to have to pull it out of the bag this round. He cannot afford to take any shots and he needs to be given a hell of a load back. So he needs a dominant round just to get back on terms and Alawadi appears to be feeling the pace. He's backing off, then his competitive instinct kicks in as he's firing back. But his work for my money is inaccurate. He's being outpunched and he's being touched up with some terrifically precise, potent punches. Look at this volley without reply from Kalungaluka Mbia. And that's what he demonstrated throughout round two as he slams in a hard left hand to the body. And I think Alawadi, not only is he feeling fatigued, but these body shots beginning to take an increasingly pronounced effect every time one slams in. Look how Alawadi loses inches. Ponderous right hand fired around the corner, landed to the rear of the head as a rabbit punch from Alawadi because it was long. Breathing through an open mouth. There's a solid left jab to catch the advancing Kulungaluka Mbia from Alawadi. Kulungaluka Mbia needs to punch with the same output that he demonstrated in the second round and in the first half of this third and final round. Can he keep it going? Because Alawadi's in bout management mode here. Look at that. You see, he's being told to engage because he's looking to manage the lead that he has 20 points to 18 for judges 3, 4 and 5. How he got that lead, I don't know, because he was scored. The second round was scored in his favour on a 4-1 split. And I find that difficult to reconcile with what took place before our very eyes in the boxing ring here at the Dakar Arena. Elowadi is really literally in survival mode right now. He doesn't want to get involved. He's just tucking up with his hands up. And again, some of these shots are breaching the defences from Kulungaluka and be a left uppercut crashing through. And Omar... Elawadi is becoming almost a stationary target as he takes a hard right hook around the corner, keen to initiate a clinch. But this, to me, is almost an instant replay of what we saw in the second round of the cracking right hand land from Kulunguluka Mbia. Remember, only the winner will secure the quota for Paris 2024. Elawadi determinedly trying to fight back, but his shot's devoid of accuracy, and he's literally running away from his man here. He hasn't thrown a punch for a while, Elawadi. Standing stock still, trying to tuck up and repel the onslaught coming in from Kulungaluka Mbia. Left jab, left uppercut, right hook around the corner. The referee hasn't issued an eight count, but Omar Alawadi has taken an awful lot. And again, I find the scoring of the second round surprising to stay the least to say the least. Kulungaluka Mbia. 10-second clapper is sounded. He's not going to find a single shot KO that he needs, but he might have found it with that right cross and a left hook to the body. Well, for my money. You see Kulungaluka Mbia raising his hand, but the third round was an instant replay of the second, and the five judges around the ring, judges three, four, and five, scored it in favor of the reigning Egyptian national champion, Omar Alawadi, which I found very, very surprising. Me too. If the man in blue doesn't win this fight, there's something wrong. Well, how is he going to win it? Because he would have needed a 10-8 scorecard for judges three, four, and five in the final round. It was a dominant final round for Ghent, for my money. Will it be 10-8 to get him to the parity that he needs to take us to count back? I think the man in blue has done enough to win it, but given the context of the scores going into the third round, it's going to be very difficult for him to do so. Has he got the 10-8 rounds that he needs in the third for judges three, Ladies four, and, and five? The results of this bout. The winner by points, by split decision, in the red corner, representing Well, Egypt. that's what it means to Omar El Awadi and his coaches. El Awadi. But I think the reigning African continental champion, Steve Kalungaluka Mbia, is really, really unfortunate there. He conceded the first round on a 4-1 split, but for the remaining six minutes, from my vantage point in the commentary box, he was the dominant boxer by a proverbial country mile. Put this man in survival mode for the third and final round, and for my money, punched him all over the ring in the second round. But the verdict will stand, and it is Omar Al Awadi of Egypt who has secured the quota for Olympic qualification next year. Yeah, it's such a it's such a shame. Guy in blue, he just he, he boxed his boxed his ears off, boxed his opponent's ears off. And again, let's look at the loop replay sequences that we're going to see because I think from rounds two and three, the replay operators would do very well to find any success from the man in red. Such was the dominance of Kulungaluka Mbia. Behind a left jab, hooks, uppercuts. This for me was round three in particular, but also round two. 
I don't know why he was more competitive in the second round, but I cannot see any way how he did enough to take the second round on a 4-1 split, giving him a 20 points to 18 lead for judges 3, 4 and 5. Steve Kulungaluka and Bia, very, very unlucky from my perspective. So Kulungaluka and Bia taking the first round on or the third round on a 4-1 split, but how on earth can you score that third round for the man in red? He was punched all over the ring. And I'm sorry, it's not my place to criticize judges. I don't like doing it. But that, the judging in rounds two and three, I find really difficult to understand. Yeah, that was ridiculous. How can you score the third round from any vantage point? 10-9 in favor of the man in red. When look at that, a 10-8 score returned from the judge from Israel, judge number three. But